for this to pop in. Oh, it got real loud. And before we go ahead and get started, uh, we're gonna let a few folks get a chance to pop on. Uh, got Matt Fontenot here with Ligio Insurance. And, uh, you know, get this thing a second to go through. It looks like we're coming. Yep. All righty. In a few minutes, give it a, give it a couple seconds that we're going to start getting some, uh, some folks. Hey, Miss Angela, Mr. Rick. Got a few, uh, got a few folks coming on. Hey, Stacy, Bo Bowda. Got a hand. So go ahead and get started. This is Matt Fontenot with Ligio Insurance. Um, you know, one of the, the, the reasons that I wanted to set up this, uh, this live meeting here was, uh, there's been, there's been some uh, letters that have come out and I've actually had this question pop up a couple of times and I figured what better way to uh, kind of go over some of these things that, that are probably popping up with, with lots, of, uh, lots of area residents in, in the city. Some people that currently own their homes, some people that are in the middle of, uh, in the middle of their potential uh, real estate transaction. The flood maps have been going under revision over the last... Let's see, it seems like 10 years and now it's yeah. finally, we got a drop dead date of December 21st yep. of 2018. So there's many places that are in a, that are not in a flood zone right now, but will be in a flood zone in the future. Um, there's a handful of them where they actually go from the bad to the good, but you know, in, in a, I've always believed in uh, the plan for war, pray for peace style. You want to make sure you we're dealing with any of the things that are, uh, I dare you to give Matthew a kiss on the cheek. Blake's a funny <laughs> guy. <laughs> uh, uh, live. He knows what we, he knows we love him. So, you know, this, uh, uh, getting, getting prepped. These, these maps are finally coming into effect and they're going to be moving on, on to, on December 21st. So a lot of people are potentially freaking out with this thing they're you know worried about what was going to happen with their flood insurance so i guess you know matt you know if you happen to receive one of these things uh if you're in a zone x now that's usually what 450 a year if you're paying for flood insurance and if you're not um uh, if you're not paying flood insurance obviously if you're not in the flood zone your mortgage your mortgage company doesn't require you right so as of um 12 21 as of december 21st um, you, if you have a mortgage, you, you should be soon getting a letter from your mortgage company stating that you're now required to carry the flood insurance. Um, and if you do not have flood insurance, um, you've only got a few more days to, to be able to buy it in the X zone. Um, but as, as of 12, 21, 18, you, if your property was not in a flood zone and it now is going to be in a flood zone, um, you will fall into a program called newly mapped extension, which will still give you the benefit of buying flood insurance for one year, up to one year. So you're going to have up to one year from the date of the map change to get into that program. And that program will allow you to buy the flood insurance at a, it's called a PRP newly mapped extension. Um, and, and we use that four hundred and fifty dollar term. That's uh, that's actually uh, that rate as of January first is going up to four hundred and eighty dollars. Um, the the non flood zone rates have about a six to seven percent rate increase as of January first. But you will have a year from the map change to get into that newly map program. The the newly map program is about fifteen percent or so is what we're hearing higher than the X zone rate, but it is at a much better rate as, as the, the other option, which would be to go get an elevation certificate. And if you're now in a flood zone, the elevation certificate will rate you based on what your true rate should be or your, your, uh, what the elevation certificate or what the elevation of your house is compared to the base flood. So it could be potentially, it could be putting you in a better position or it could be put, potentially putting you in a, Worst position. Yes. Yeah, it, it's you know when you are, if you are now in a what's considered a uh, a high risk or an A zone or an AE zone, um, your rate is determined. We don't come up with a rate ex except with an elevation certificate. So 
They take the, the elevation of your top and bottom floor and compare it to the base flood in that area and the rate comes directly off that elevation certificate. So what I like to tell you, we talk about top and bottom floor and comparing it to base flood elevation. I like to, you know, whenever I'm talking to my buyers and our sellers, I talk about, uh, you think of base flood elevation kind of like Noah's Ark level and things that are higher than Noah's Ark flood level is lower premium because it's the water will come to Noah's Ark before it comes to you. Things that go That's below, right. it's a higher risk because water goes to you before it goes to Noah's Ark. So to answer, I got a, one of the questions that popped up and Lindsay, I, uh, I've actually I talked to Jeremy about this and, and stay tuned because there's some good stuff in here. Uh, if, if you're looking to see if your house is going, one of the questions that popped up was what happens, how do I find out if I'm going to be in the new, uh, in the new flood map? Lafayette Consolidated Go uh, Government's website, you go to lafayettela.gov, there is a link off to the side that gives you the preliminary flood maps. Uh, you can, and we'll put that in the, uh, in the, in the comments below once this, uh, once this live, uh, feed is, is done. So you can check, you can actually put in your, you can put in your address and pull everything up. You can see if there is a letter of map amendment, which would, which would potentially remove you from the flood zone. Now this is based off of the old maps. You'd have to reapply because the new maps are, are coming in. And actually I just see, uh, I see somebody going, thank you for, uh, for posting that. So you got, you've got access to that. So if you are going into a flood zone, you should have received a letter from the parish. Um, obviously, not everybody receives their mail these days and, uh, or, or maybe didn't get, receive the letter, but there is the link that Robbie talked about that you can search by address and it will, it will show the current flood zone and it'll show the preliminary, which the preliminary is now... 10 days away or whatever it is uh, on the 21st yep. um, and it will it'll tell you what zone that you're you're in now and what you're going to be on the new maps if you are in a if you are potentially in in a a zone or an AE zone to now's the time to call your insurance agent now's the time to uh, try to get some uh, some idea of what the rates um, will be um, and again that elevation if you are going into a high-risk flood zone eventually you will need an elevation certificate, right? So you, you have one year from 1221 to, to stay in that newly mapped extension program, which will allow you to buy the flood insurance, kind of like you're not in a flood zone, but that extension program will see every year, it will see a gradual rate increase. Um, the, the X zone is preferred risk. The, preferred risk extension or newly mapped program will see a gradual rate increase every year until it gets to what they call uh, actuary rates or actu actual rates based on your elevation certificate. Um, so, you, you know, eventually you will need to get an elevation certificate to determine what that eventual rate or that ceiling will be for that flood insurance. So if you are we kind of backtrack to make sure that 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 I'm understanding and, and that uh, that we're clarifying it too. So if you're not in a flood zone, we'll be in a new flood zone. You've got a year to be able to get that flood elevation certificate, or you can no, go no. straight to that no, actuary. No, you you have a or year. You have to be. You have a year to buy flood insurance in the newly mapped extension program, which allows by, you to buy it at a at a at a better rate. So that's by twelve twenty one eighteen or twelve twenty one nineteen. Well, you have. You have till twelve twenty one twenty, right? Oh no, I'm sorry, twelve twenty one of nineteen. So you have exactly one year from the the effective date of the new map. Mm -hmm. So the new the new the map effective date twelve twenty one eighteen. You have one year from that map date to get into that extension program. Perfect. And look, if you guys need some uh, uh, some folks to be able to help you with as far as the elevation certificate. I've got a, I'll, I'll also post a couple of uh, contacts as far as getting that uh, a surveyor out to get you guys uh, get you guys set up. There's there's a few of them around town that that we we both used over over the years to be able to help out that are in current flood zones that are in there too. So all good stuff to be able to help out. Um, also on that, if you go on that link too, I, I noticed Stacy. Thank you for uh, for posting that link right there too. Inside the flood map, uh, in that flood map link. You can you'll be able to see what your what the base flood elevations are predicted to be. There's a 
if you top right hand corner there, it looks like a little, I like to call it the hamburger. It's three uh, squares that are kind of uh, rotated, rotated off to the side, but you click on that and there's a drop down to be able to go and click all kind of fun stuff from elevation points to uh, base flood to whether or not there was an old Loma on, on file. All of these things that are uh, out, uh, out there to be able to help you with the data to be able to get yourself set up. So, um, do you have there's there's a link to um, uh, Stephanie Weeks in the Lafayette Consolidated Government. She has a uh, uh, a site where you can enter your address in and see if there is like you said elevation certificates available on that there's on the website. There is a spot that'll show you know lots one through whatever of you know. ABC subdivision has has an elevation certificate available and you can purchase those if there if there is something available if your insurance agent doesn't happen to have that on file sometimes the parish has has one for the old uh, you know for based off the old flood maps you can pick that up for uh, $25 at I believe it's at the um, on Willow at the planning and zoning at, uh, at Willow um, it, it's kind of, it's at this point in time, if there's a Loma on the old maps, they like I think you mentioned they have to be recertified. So there is a, a you'll process. Have to, you'll have to reapply, reapply for it. Reapply for it, and and I'm assuming maybe the developers in certain neighborhoods are going to do that on their own, or they will automatically do that. Um, but a Loma, for those of you that that are listening to us, is uh, it takes you back out of the flood zone or amends the maps to to put you back into the uh, uh, the preferred risk options. Also known as a letter of map amendment, which uh, removes you, like you said, removes you from the uh, the flood zone. Oh, camera malfunction here. Bear, bear with us right here. The, um, yeah, those, and a lot of times, especially on some new neighborhoods, there's, uh, you notice that you get retention ponds and all that stuff on the inside. A lot of that was done so the, the lots themselves could be raised up Right. out of the flood zone if the if the farmland was originally put in on a flood zone the they they built all these these lots up so to be able to help them move out some of them that had a loma will you can reapply and you should be okay some of them won't but it's always a good idea to double check with your insurance agent and i'm sure stephanie's gonna love me for this but i'll give you guys her number is 337-291 eight four six eight this is also on that letter that uh, that you guys would have received hopefully uh, via mail a lot of folks have been catching these over the last several weeks or so and it's it's popped up at least at our office quite a few times and uh it uh, all the better to be able to at least bring a shed a little light and and uh to know what to do moving moving forward i don't know if anybody's got any questions hanging out right here i'll go and kind of scroll through All right, Tracy Lasser, Fannie Mae requires that flood coverage is obtained within 120 days after the effective date of the remapping. Flood, uh, flood certs or LOL, not laugh out loud, but the life of the loan. So any change to the zone notifies that servicer. Once that notification hits, the steps to begin to notify borrowers that flood insurance will be required on their property and lenders will require that as escrowed even if the borrower refuses to obtain a policy within that required time frame, a lender placed policy will be purchased at the expense of the borrower, also known wow. as force placed. And I'll, I'll okay. be the, uh, you know, I've seen this pop up on, on files in the past. Force placed uh, flood insurance basically goes off of absolute worst case scenario. That's right. And, um, you know, and, and they're, they're covering their loan. They're not covering your property and, and not your not, contents, none of it. That's it's, right. They're covering their loan only, and it's about easily triple the price of what you would pay, or um, or better, I'm sure, in, huh? in the standard market. And and look, there will be some. Uh, there are recently there are some private flood market options available. Um, that's very hit or miss. It's kind of on a per address basis. Um, so when we are when we are um, quoting flood, it pulls a flood zone determination, and we get the rate based on the elevation certificate, but occasionally occasionally we will get a private market option that is in some cases much better than the National Flood Program. So um, again, that's, and I think we're gonna see more 
and more private market flood options available over the next several years, um, mm -hmm. just because the the national flood program obviously is 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 hinged on the government. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we, we're hoping that the government shutdown here on the which is also on How twelve twenty one. Um, How convenient. <laughs> the, the flood program ceases to exist without the federal government. So if there's a government shutdown, so the flood program shut down too. Um, so anyway, I think because of that, the, the private market option is going to be m more available in, in the future. But Lindsay Holy had a, a good question too. She says, "I'm in a flood. I'm in a flood zone, but I got an elevation certificate, and I'm not about, and I'm about ele." I am and about elevation by a foot. I'm assuming that means she's a foot above. So that's based off of, we'll need to verify, you know, Broussard, I believe has been pretty good about giving us what the new BFEs are. I've had some, I have had some uh, trouble getting what the new maps are gonna be from Youngsville, mostly because I, I'm assuming it's just to, to cover themselves in case it happens to change between now and the 21st, which I totally understand. Um, but these things it, it goes into effect on the 21st and then it's 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 signed sealed delivered and the new maps are involved but to answer uh, to Lindsay so basically what would happen if you had that elevation certificate you were pulled out the letter of map amendment you would you were pulled out of the old flood zone you would have to reapply to to keep that Loma into effect into the new well if maps. you're if your top of bottom floor is about a foot above that that still is not gonna allow you to get a Loma you're the loma only applies when your ground level, not the not the living floor, but the ground level is above the base flood. So um, again, if you're in a if you are moved into a high risk flood zone, your rate is determined on base flood compared to the top of the bottom floor or your living floor. Um, but if the ground level, um, the 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 raised the the either the natural grade or the field dirt brought in, if the ground level is above the base flood, then you could potentially um, be eligible to get a loma. Um, but for example, the flood rate on a home with the the living area that is one foot above base flood, um, one foot above base flood doesn't give you a whole lot of benefit on your flood insurance. And for unfortunately. Um, that, that rate is probably somewhere in the $1,500 range a year, or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, based on your coverages. Um, but that's, if let's just call it $1,500. That's the, that is why it's so important to get into that extension program within that first year, because instead of paying $1,500 right off the bat, you would pay, you would pay somewhere in the neighborhood of four to 500 and see gradual rate increases every year. So it could take you several years to get to the $1,500 uh, mark. So that's very, very important that you... And that's also transferable too for people that are in the middle of a, a, a purchasing transaction. So if you're, if you're purchasing that house uh, from somebody that's going to be in that new yep. high-risk flood zone, that's transferable over to your new buyer so that, you know, unless there's a lapse in coverage, if I'm, if I'm that's right. understanding that's that That's exactly correct. right. So, as long as there's continuation of coverage, um, the policy can be transferred or assumed by a new, new owner. Um, and as long as there is no lapse in coverage, then you stay in that extension program. And, and again, you will see those gradual rate increases. Um, you know what the percentage is? You know, I don't know why fifteen percent is we, somewhere. We've heard there, the but... same thing. Um, we haven't heard exactly what the rate percentage is going to be, but if you use the fifteen percent, that you will see, it will take you like in that four fifty to fifteen hundred range. You'll see, you can see that it will take you several years to get there. Mm -hmm. But if there is a lapse in coverage and you miss the boat, you know, and on flood insurance, you have a, um, you have a about a twenty eight day window to have it paid and issued past your effective date on your policy. If you miss that window and you lose That's that, right. then you go straight to the elevation certificate rate. Right. right. And, and one of the things kind of jump into the, uh, the, the new flood zones also, some of the, the where they, they, they base the insurance, the base flood elevation, which is how they're, they're uh, you know, you mentioned being a foot above on your, on your elevation certificate. It depends on what the new base flood elevations are. If you were 21 in the old map, you could be 21 and a half or 22 in could, the new map, could, or you could, could be 20. You. It could go, it could go lower. It just depends. So that's all. That's uh, 
that's all part of the yeah. uh, of, of of doing your homework on on the front end. So uh, <clears throat> I don't I don't think we got any extra any questions that are popping out, Matt. I don't know if you got anything else to add. No, we're available. If anybody has any questions, our agency is very knowledgeable on it, and um, we're available to answer any of your questions. Legio Insurance, 989-2323. Let's see. Can you let them know how long the preferred rate is good once they become in a flood zone? Like we, I think we've covered that. Again, so. you, there is, you, you do not get locked in. There is no grandfathering into the X zone that you are in. You simply go into the program that's called a PRP, Preferred Risk Policy Extension Newly Mapped Program. And that newly mapped program, again, will see gradual rate increases each year. So you will stay in that program until you get if you don't ever get an elevation certificate to your insurance agent or to the, your carrier, then the gradual rate increase will never stop. Um, they need until the elevation that, certificate. Until you get to that stopping point, yes? That's right. So, uh, let me make sure I'm missing. So in, in order for that to, and Scott, I don't know if I'm answering your question, is it free? The flood elevation certificates, I believe they run about 400, 450. Yeah. Uh, 350 to 450, I guess it depends on how much work's already been been done? Uh, I've seen them up as high as five. It just depends on who you end up uh, end up talking to, and I'll make sure I'll, I'll leave a couple of the another uh, another little malfunction here. The the, the program itself is uh, you in order to be able to be in it, you have to have flood insurance now in order for that gradual rate increase to come through. Otherwise, if you don't have it, the mortgage company will either force place it or you'll be forced to buy it later on down the line. And in that case, it's not the gradual, it's whatever the rate happens to be either based on the flood elevation or what? Well, if, if you're in a flood zone and your house was built after, your house was built after 1980, you, are, you can't get a flood rate without an elevation certificate. So you're gonna go into whatever the elevation, it's gonna cost whatever you $400 that. to get the elevation certificate. And then whatever the rate is, it's going to be whatever that standard rate is, right. and it, there's no gradual increase. It's just after straight again, to and you have twelve months from from twelve twenty one of eighteen. Perfect. Well, cool. Uh, uh, hey, Kim, what's happening? So, I think uh, I think that about covers it, guys. If y'all have some some questions, uh, anything anything else, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, my office, 267-4099, Matt, 989-2323. Um, look, any any questions you have, we're happy to help. Uh, of course, Stephanie Weeks over at Consolidated Government at, at, with the uh, the floodplain administrator, she's been phenomenal to be able to help out with, with a lot of questions that are going on too. So uh, make sure to check out that link. I noticed uh, Christian Leach, thank you for uh, for posting that too. He uh, that that's been that's been a, a wealth of a resource to be able to double check to see what's showing up in the um, that's been showing up as far as new flood maps. Ooh, one more question that I'm that I'm thinking. One of one of the properties that you and I had talked about a while back. We had a home that was not in a flood zone and landed in a flood way. Which, yeah. you know, for for those that for those of you that don't know floodways, there's you cannot pull a permit. To be able to build a structure unless you have a certificate of no rise and those things can be darn near impossible darn near impossible to uh, almost almost just out of reach to be able to yeah. build anything there so floodways how does a floodway is what's the difference between you know we have an ae floods we have an ae flood rate we have an a flood rate and we've got a floodway what's the difference so price wise, what are we what are we looking at price wise to be able to? So a, a floodway, if there's an existing structure in a floodway, it is rated exactly like it would be in the flood zone. So if it's if the flood zone A or AE, it's based on the elevation certificate, which shows the base flood and it shows the top of the bottom floor, and there's where your rate comes from. So the rate difference is none in a floodway. Um, like you said, the only difference there is that you cannot pull a permit to build anything new. You can't build a, a, a shop, a pool, a, any kind of structure in a, that's in a flood, deemed a floodway. 
So, um, and, and the A unnumbered is, a, is an area that is not necessarily as studied. Um, I guess you could say there were no boots on the ground to do the exact studies in that area. Um, that's an A unnumbered zone and the, the base flood is determined by the community. That's where Stephanie Weeks would determine what the base flood is. And then an AE zone is a more studied area and they have the more accurate base flood elevations in those areas. So we typically uh, find as those higher or lower? No, your AE zones are typically, the rates are better, right? That's good so, to know. And on the maps, uh, the darker, if I'm, my memory is correctly, on the flood maps on Lafayette's, the darker green is AE in the kind of, uh, not really, not really aqua, but like, um, I like to call it the mint chocolate chip look. Yeah, is the, uh, there's a graph off to the right that shows that you. That shows you what those, yeah. what those colors are. Uh, another one that pops up, I've gotten this question a bunch of times, X500. That's the red shade on Lafayette's website. So that's in the you know, 500 year flood zone, but flood, zone, flood insurance not required. That's right. Yes. As long as it, X is X for us, for insurance agents, X is X. So whether it's in the, um, the 500 year or the 100 year X zone, it's still X and you fall under the preferred risk at that point. You know, I'll be the, you know, 2016 brought a lot of light to a lot of areas that, you know, never had flooded before. And, you know, uh, we live in South Louisiana, man. And even if it didn't flood back then, it's, it's uh, you know, being able to see firsthand and you probably more so than most from wow, the planes yeah, that you've had to deal with. I know we had a ton of listings that came and got a lot of water and folks, some of them had insurance and some of them had it. The few hundred dollars that you got to spend it, even if you're not in the flood zone in the, in the, in the near future, it's, yeah. it's a, uh, we're Much South easier Louisiana. to spend a couple hundred bucks, you know. I, I know South Louisiana, the peace of mind of having that flood policy for three to four hundred dollars. Either that or twenty or thirty grand on a and, and, on how much you want to gamble. And, and, <laughs> and FEMA will not replace your house, right? So they will, you know, there they, there may be some assistance there if you don't have flood insurance. But we've had we had everything from one inch to a water up to the ceiling and total losses. So. What about that? You, you made that actually brought up another question in mind. So, a house that had a flood claim mm -hmm. during 16 or even you know, even within the last couple of years, what happens? Uh, those when claims it, when do it, get reported and they do get, um, there is a, uh, a software or whatever. There is when a claim gets reported, um, that that is we can see that right so we can the, the when we're right rating a flood or rating an address multiple claims will pop up um one claim doesn't affect your rates at all um, multiple claims do right so multiple claims even in a non-flood zone we've had situations on houses that were not in the flood zone that have flooded three and four times over the last 10 years Ooh, man. and and not in a flood zone right so and that and and again that that's the reason why we needed these new map, these new map changes. There, you know, there's a lot. Everything of, was built off like a surveyor. Nothing was computerized back then. Huh? The, the last map change was 1996. So obviously the technology has changed quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's this right. wouldn't happen back then. <laughs> the surveyors used to use a nail in a tree, and and that's where that right. was their that was their point of, uh, of of where they would rate their or that's where the point where they would shoot their elevations off of, and obviously that. That tree grows over the over the years, right? Yeah. So now it's all GPS and it's uh, more accurate information. And and I will tell you this: that living in an area that saw a lot of water from the flood of '16 and having those maps available to us from way back since 2011 has been a pain. But it's also it the new maps were pretty darn accurate to what what the water did from those floods. So. Um, Again, I mean, if you're in South Louisiana, you should have flood insurance anyway. It's, it's inexpensive, especially if you're not in the flood zone. And uh, that's it. Absolutely. All right. I think we got everybody. Man, everybody, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Thank you. As always, if y'all if y'all have any questions, Matt, 989-2323. Myself uh, over at our office at EXP, 267-4099. You guys have a great Thursday, great weekend. Merry Christmas and uh, Merry Christmas. How if y'all need?
Make it a great one.